Welcome to Startup Confidential, what industry insiders will never tell you that you need to know if you're building a consumer brand. With your host, best-selling author of Ramping Your Brand, Dr. James Richardson. Let's do this. Welcome to episode 120. This is part two of my interview with Samir Lane of Freedom Trail Capital. Let's segue into the, the meat, I think, yeah. which is, to, and this may take a while to unpack, <laughs> and I'm honestly a little confused, so maybe you can help clarify my brain on behalf of the audience, yeah. um, and this is just what I've seen yeah. out in the in the ecosystem, and I don't know where the boundaries are, but there are brands where this, I call them the the Once Upon a Farms, where Jen Carner comes in, writes a check, gets her chunk of the company and is actually an operating founder on the leadership yep. team. Yep. And selectively and quite generously starts to activate her PR machine mm -hmm. when, yep. when called upon by the team. Yep. <laughs> Not randomly. Yeah. <laughs> when called on the team. And then there's people who just take equity versus cash, but they're kind of acting just like a regular endorser. Like mm -hmm. they're like, okay, when do we do the spot? Yep. It's like they treat it like an ad endorsement. And then there's folks who are like, nah, I just want to, I just want to invest and I don't want to be involved. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't actually know a lot of celebrities who are like that. They've got to be there. They, okay. They're 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 more there than you think. <laughs> they're, they're not they're, they're not on the cover of Big Magazine. No. Yeah, they're more there because nowadays I think you get a Serena Ventures and you mm. get Andre Iguodala and Steph Curry, you get a lot of people who are, they understand the value of investing, right? And they're like, I'm writing this check through my fund or family office or whatever it is. Yeah, it's like a family office. It, that's it. Yeah, I'm writing a check and I'm a silent partner. So there's a lot of people, Aaron Rodgers is, is a general- Except, except they made all the money in 15 years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not exactly. 75 years and three generations. <laughs> yep, yep. So you do have that, that third bucket. There's a lot of people, but they are, to your point, hidden to some extent. Okay. Um, How do you compare first? the, what, what is it, is there one of those three you're not interested in, like you don't want to? Yeah, for, for us as a fund, that third bucket doesn't interest us. Like you don't want to broker their investment. No, no, we're, we're not there to broker their investment. We, we're like, our, we invest in companies that can benefit from that Jennifer Garner model. And even, even the equity for endorsement model is somewhat appealing to us. Okay. But most most importantly, what matters to us is buy-in from the talent partner, real authentic interest in the company, and a way to authentically tell the story of why this person is associated with the company, right? When Jennifer talks about motherhood and her kids and the Once Upon a Farm story, it fits and it makes sense, as opposed to, I don't know, I just seem like a great business, I just got some equity and I did it and that's why. We we want yeah, well, to be. She's got the whole. She's got the whole West Virginia thing going too. Yep, it? exactly. She didn't so, grow up in Park Avenue. It makes it harder. It, so, so, but the story feels that much more authentic <laughs> as a result, right? So, <laughs> you know, the, our our favorite is that first model. It is invest okay. operating partner at the outset, founder. You help kind of craft the story. <laughs> now I have a follow up question. So. Yeah. Is it just me or is that actually a bit of a hunt to find A-list and B-list celebrities who have business sense, Samir? Um, it is a little or bit- am I, Or am I the one who's prejudiced? Yeah, no, it's a little bit of a hunt. Okay. Every day becomes less and less of a hunt, right? And I, I give people right. the example like, like, all the time. Mark Andreessen of our Andreessen Horowitz on his podcast in December mentioned that he doesn't believe that talent-led brands or celebrity-led brands are a fad. He says they're the future of consumer. And, yeah. and they are, right? And a part of that is, and I will say, like, Gatorade is a talent-led, celebrity-led brand. It's just that <laughs> the talent was paid through endorsement deals and royalties, right? And nowadays, you get a, a it's a Beyonce line from one of her songs. Nowadays, talent says, pay me in equity. And so yeah. now you're starting, every day you get more people that are getting more business sense, they're getting more savvy, they're getting more entrepreneurial. It's still a chore to find that person who says, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to sacrifice X, Y, and Z for the benefit of the brand and the company. And I'm going to be in it for the long haul. Whatever you need, I'm here. That is tough to find, but you're still getting people who are in that second column where they're like, all right, I don't need that much cash. I got plenty of cash. Right. Pay me, okay. pay me in equity. And then, and then there are some people who are like, pay me in equity, but it's like pulling teeth to get something from them. 
but I, to me, it's more, to me, the real hunt, wouldn't the real challenge be finding the person in the first bucket, the one who wants to be like the investor operator celebrity, like Jen Garner. I mean, to me, that's yeah. a pretty rare person it, it is it, because it, she's spending a lot of her time. Yeah. In yeah. Meetings. It's <laughs> usually those folks are more seasoned than others, right? Like it, it's very <laughs> rare. But, but as I mentioned, it becoming less rare because okay. you've got success stories. Not everybody is successful. You only hear about the success stories. All of that's true. Even in even in the venture capital world, right? Like usually people say there is some 80 to 90 percent of your portfolio isn't going to do well. The power law dictates that you only need, you know, a few big, big, big winners. So in celebrity, like now you get the A-list folks who are more seasoned. They see George Clooney and they see Jessica Alba and Jennifer Garner and The Rock. And they're like, cool, I, I can do that. So so every day it is becoming a little easier to find that person. But it's still very, very difficult to find someone who, who says this is going to be a five, seven, eight year journey. We might get lucky and cash out in three. But look at it as a five to ten year journey. What's the difference between the celebrity founder who essentially wants to be the CEO versus what Jen Garner is doing. Yeah, so because I see more of those. Yeah, so it, that's it, where I, I. It's more of a head scratcher for me because it's part of me is like, why wouldn't you just hire someone? Yeah, I, nowadays be that exactly. more of that. You you are getting more. So two things that you mentioned, which are <laughs> like really poignant, right? The first is now you are getting more A list celebrities who say, "I'm here for X, Y, and Z," and X, Y, and Z doesn't include running the company. I'm going to find someone who's very capable and very smart yeah. to to run the company, make strategic decisions and to hire a team. And right. so that even even with, with you know, the, the Jay's brands, we had the, we had a similar thing. Just Water from the Smith family has its own super talented CEO. So you're getting a lot of talent who say and also that that's they also don't have the time for that. Right. They're like, I got to make movies and music and I got to <laughs> tour and do X, Y and Z. Right. Like usually insert megastar A, they're like. I'm going to insert some money, but I don't need to have all the money in here because I want to share the risk. And also on top of that, a lot of times through investing, you can get very, very experienced, very talented people around the table with you. Right. So when we invest in the fund, in a, in a company, right. we're bringing our experience to a table, my experience and my brands that I've worked with. Other investors have similar experiences. And collectively, you now have this mastermind of folks who say, let's work together to get this brand to the top. And so a lot of times, like when celebrities like, I'll just fund it all myself, it, it's tough, right? They're taking all the risk. Yeah, they get all the reward, but at the same time, they're losing out on having that that room of individuals that they can tap into for. Yeah. What is your opinion on this uh, this definition that's floating out there that I've seen? This a definition of the authentic celebrity partner is mm. the celebrity who they themselves are consuming the brand, then they then they get contact. This is the vitamin water story. Yeah, yeah. I was drinking vitamin water on stage. Yeah. And then, um, the VP of marketing contacts 50 Cent and says, hey, um, since you like our business. Yeah. You know what? I will is, this a, is this just random dumb luck or is this something you can actually plan? No, you, yeah. you can plan it. You can plan it. It takes time and effort. And as I mentioned, for us as a fund, like sometimes we'll invest in a company where there is no celebrity and we'll go try to bring someone aboard after the fact, right? Sure. And, and what the way we do that is through authentic partnership. Like I think it's a necessity in order for a talent partnership to be successful because you want someone when they're telling the story to actually understand and believe it, right? Like if if, the, if it was um, two things, you got Dave Chappelle has a joke, right? When he says, you know, he, he can't tell the difference between Coke and Pepsi. All he knows is Pepsi, Pepsi paid him last so Pepsi tastes better. Right. And so if you've got a situation like that, nowadays, consumers are way more discerning and they're going to yeah. see out. And then you also get like a Charles Barkley with a hot mic denigrating Weight Watchers. Right. And he's kind of like, I don't, I don't use that stuff, but they pay me to use it. Right. And it's it's nonsense. I don't look and, like I use it. Right. And and, and people people are going to call <laughs> BS, especially when you're talking about Gen Z, Gen Alpha. Right. They, they want their talent partners. They want like you're telling me that you founded this cosmetics company, but you don't use it. They're, they're gonna they're gonna laugh you out of the room well you'll get doxxed really fast by someone yeah yeah and so i i think that the authentic partnership is a necessity sometimes it does happen in reverse where they're like hey this person uses the company come aboard as an investor and help us kind of lift this company into the into the, the stratosphere that that does happen 
um, fa fairly often. You, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. That would be my preference, but I'm a little yeah. purist because I yeah. think if you discover them in the wild using your thing, it just feels like they're going to be a lot more likely as fans mm -hmm. of your product to put in extra effort. Yeah. Whatever that means. Yeah. I mean, it's um, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds with Aviation Gin, right? Like, and, and Ryan now is, is he's the poster. And he buys it. <laughs> yeah. He, he's the poster child of this, of this thesis and this model working because he's, he's rinsed and repeat and been very successful. <laughs> But Aviation Gin had been around for a few years before Ryan came aboard. It yeah. just so happened that he liked the team. He liked the product. He was a gin drinker. He's like, hey, I can take this and we go to the next level, right? And then, you know, Di Diageo writes him a nice nine-figure check, high nine-figure check for, for that. But it was because he was a gin drinker and the brand had been around. He liked the brand. He liked the messaging and all that stuff. And I, it was I, think, I think you're, you're um, yeah, I think you're you're adding something here, which is, um, they need to be category geeks. That's what I talk about in my book. Yeah. They're at least a category geek. Yeah. Then even if they weren't an active user before you approach them, it's still going to come off much more authentic because they can speak yeah. the language of the innovation, right? which is important. Like if you don't, yeah. I mean, if you don't care about organic food, organic produce, it's going to show. Right. Right. Yeah. Or, or, Sustainability. <laughs> sustainability doesn't matter to you, but you're partnering with this plastic free brand and you're, you're talking about sustainability and you could care less about, about the climate and the environment. It, it, it's going to show for sure. Somewhere in your PR verse, yep. it will, yep. the contradiction will erupt. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, how would you define, how would you detect at Freedom Trail Capital that celebrity X, Y, or Z is actually way too overloaded to be doing what ah. we, sorry, we're out. Like, I'm sorry, it's the Mark Cuban. Sorry, you don't seem committed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we've How had to make determine that. It? Yeah, we have to, we've had to make that determination recently, actually, for, for a, a brand I won't name and a town I won't name, but the individual was everywhere and talking about multiple things. He had uh, multiple deals, some endorsement deals, some equity deals. And when you're looking at press or social media, or even when you're talking to sometimes like retailers are, are a great fountain of information as well, because you can say, hey, this brand, what do you think about it? And you can look at Nielsen, you can look at all these things and you get a sense that this one individual who's come to you fundraising for X brand has 30 other things that they're trying to do. So when they go to retailers, the retailer's like, yeah, but you came yesterday with your pet product and now you're coming to us with your gin brand and then you've got your cosmetics brand that you, that's around the corner. And so a lot of it is, it'll be clear as day. And then also when we do diligence, we're also doing two things. We're looking at the legal agreement with the talent, if there is talent already in. And I also always, I also speak to the talent as well, right? Like I understand yeah. everyone's busy. It's super tough. And a lot of times we're like, oh no, they don't, they don't speak to investors. But for us as a fund, given our background and experience working with talent, I'm like, Look, I, I have experience working with talent. I want to speak to this person to understand why this company, this product matters to them. And A, if they can't make the time of day for me to invest and have oh, that conversation. Yeah, with that's them, not a partnership you want. It's not a partnership you want. And then B, if I'm looking at their social media or their press or anything like that, and I'm seeing 47 other things, I know they're not as committed to it as I would like them to be for us to reach the promised land. So now I'm going to hit you with the blind side question. Is the rock one of the overcommitted celebrities who's screwing himself over? I would say no. Okay. I would say no. And why he, do you say that? He is very committed in a ton of multiple places. Each of the places he's aligned himself. The, the one thing that I'm kind of like, I don't love it, is, is Voss, Voss Water. It just seems, it seems like out there. I think, I think people, a lot of people don't even know that he's associated with Voss, right? Yeah, I but, didn't actually. Yeah, exactly. But everywhere else, it is core to he, who he is and what his image is as an entertainer, as a star, and as someone who cares about their health, right? When you think about energy drink, you're like, yeah, he probably drinks that before he works out. And then you think about tequila, you're like, yeah, he probably drinks that right after he works out. He has a great time. <laughs> and then he just launched a skincare brand at Target, and he's telling the story of like, people are always asking for, asking for a skincare regimen. So these are things that he and I, I don't know him personally, and you know I, I know some folks who who help with his, his business endeavors. But these are actually core to how he spends his day, right? Like probably has an energy drink pretty frequently. Probably drinks some tequila. 
He's for sure using the skincare stuff. And so I think he's very committed in a lot of places, but at the very least, you can say each of those is authentic, right? When you get to a place where it feels like they're slapping their name on it, now you start to ask the question of like, are you doing too much? So we're talking more on the order of like eight plus. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You can definitely start scratching your head going. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. But well, that's, what, that's what I've said to people is sort of... Um, It's just the law of math. Like how much of their PR verse could they ever dedicate to you? Yeah, that, that's, and yeah. Have you really had a kind of conversation about their prior, their irrational prioritization of their investments? They may have a favorite and it's not you. And, and that, that, then you get in trouble. Then you get in trouble, you right? You should know that before you sign. <laughs> yeah. If, if you can, like a parent say, I love all my children and all my investments equally. <laughs> now, now, now you've not got- if you have 10. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? You're in trouble. Definitely not possible if you have 10 kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it's, um no, it, it, it's, yeah, someone like The Rock, as long as it's very, like, authentic, again, like, you know, even, even Mark Wahlberg has a lot going on, has a, has a lot mm -hmm. going on, but, you know, he's got municipal, which he wears on a daily basis, and he's got this, which he uses, on, right? So for each of those, and they're in, they're in very smartly selected categories where, They're not trampling over each other. Sometimes they're synergistic. Sometimes they work together. Um, the Rock has his Project Rock deal with Under Armour, which is his apparel line and his energy drink, right? So you drink your energy drink before you go to the gym, but you're wearing Project Rock in the gym, right? So it's, at some point you're like, all right, th there's some synergy there. But once you start to get to a place where you're like, you're endorsing this pet thing, but you don't have any pets, now I've got to ask questions about, or, or you've got a spirits brand and we know that you're sober. Now I've got to start to ask the question of like, Why are you doing these things? And it feels so inauthentic. I have to call BS. Or my my emerging favorite, you're you're endorsing a non-alcoholic brand, but you drink like a fish. Um, that, no, that, that's exactly right. That's good. Like at least there needs to be a store. Yeah. But so people <laughs> told you that low alk or non-alk was on trend. So now you're like, all right, I got to jump into it. And, and that's just- You haven't tried it. any, but you've heard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so wrapping up, Samir, how, how does your fund- plan to um, accelerate the funding of a more diverse venture ecosystem in consumer. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's it's interesting because you have a lot of funds now that are exclusively looking for diverse entrepreneurs, which, which isn't our mandate. We're not exclusively investing in diverse entrepreneurs, right. but it is of particular importance to us, right? So when McKinsey says that diverse founders and entrepreneurs have more efficient businesses that generate more revenue... That, that means a lot. And a lot of it has to do with like the backstory and what they've overcome and how they can persevere. But, you know, we, we are, every time we do a deal, every time we get uh, a, a, someone reaches out who has a diverse background, we're speaking to that, we're having an earnest conversation with that individual, right? And we're talking, we're thinking through, does it, does it fit for us? Could it fit for us? Can we advise them in some other way? We might not invest, but can we be an advisor, can we point you in the right direction? This is not right for our fund, but here are three funds that that it is right for. And so we're, we're trying to establish a real, real strong relationship with diverse entrepreneurs. And anytime, literally anytime we get a diverse founder who reaches out, we're saying, how quickly can we speak with them to understand, okay. is it a fit for, for our fund? And again, if it's not, here are three funds that you can speak to. Here is my phone number if you need advice. Let me try to help you in other ways. We might not invest, but we're here to help you in other ways still as well. Yeah, I think just being more available for free for free consult, I think it's sort of that's the beginning. Yeah, no, actually, that, that I couldn't have said it better. Like diverse founders, and entrepreneurs usually can't get the time of day from 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 venture funds and, and anything to that effect. Right. And so being available, being present. That's the first being, step. That, that's the first step. And it goes it goes. A lot further than I think people realize, to be honest. Yeah, I think that's an important distinction because I think the, you know, this seems like the conversation publicly is only about, you know, throwing money around. And I think that there's a lot more ways you can sort of put your finger on the scale. Yeah. Because yeah. access, access to critical information is one of them. That, 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 that's, that's the that, first that. thing you get shut out of. Right? Yeah. Samir, I, um, thanks for your time. And I hope this was useful for me. Yeah, no, it was a ton of fun, ton of fun. I, I, I will say, I, I could talk consumer brands or talent-led brands all day. So it was a pleasure and thanks for having me.
Thanks for listening. Remember, Dr. Richardson has loads of resources for founders at premiumgrowthsolutions.com. And when you're on his site, don't forget to take his founders quiz and see if you're ready to ride the skate ramp of exponential growth.